Hi everyone, welcome to the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. My name is Naomi Hartle and I will be the moderator for this session. Thank you so much for joining us for this 24-hour back-to-back global event. We could not make this day happen without you. We were hoping for about 500, 600 people. We have over a thousand. A thousand people. We've pretty much doubled our numbers, if not tripled the numbers that we wanted. This is absolutely amazing. We are very humbled by the outpouring support, even through technical difficulties that we were having, and the promotion that each and every one of you have done to support us throughout this process, and the promotion of the Phys Ed Summit. By sharing the Phys Ed Summit with one person, you are able to impact hundreds of students. Thank you so much for being a part of this and for helping push best practices forward, professional development forward, and effective physical education. Reminder that sometimes when we use technology, things don't always work out the way we want them to. So if that's the case, now this is a pre-recorded session, so I'm hoping nothing bad happens, but if for some reason the video stops, please let us know in the chat or on Twitter, wherever you are, we will make sure that we can get it up and running for you again. So we just appreciate your patience within that process and within that time. After the summit, at the end of the 24 hours, we will have a feedback survey. All you have to do is go to www.physedagogy.com slash summit slash and you'll be able to find that feedback survey. Once you fill out that survey, you will automatically be emailed a certificate. If for some reason you don't get that email certificate, you may have typed your email in wrong. So just send us a message at physedagogy at gmail.com and we will make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. It is with my great pleasure that I introduce to you the presenter for this session, Daryl Salmi. Daryl has taught physical education at both the elementary and middle school levels in Stillwater, Minnesota for 20 years. He has coached baseball, ice hockey, and currently coaches football at the varsity level. He has been a presenter at numerous conferences, including the Minnesota Ties Technology Conference, the Georgia Share the Wealth Conference, and the Gopher Sports and PE Summit. And now he can add the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. Daryl, it's all yours. Hi, my name is Daryl Salmi. I'm here to present uh, regarding Smart PE. And smart PE is really a concept of using and choosing to use technologies that will enhance the opportunities for my students, our students, and, and ourselves as teachers. Um, there's a lot of technology out there and many of them are really, really good and they're meaningful in so many ways. Uh, and there are also a lot of technology out there as, as many understand and know that um, are difficult to use perhaps, aren't really truly enhancing the learning and therefore um, creating a difficult situation with um, student learning and teacher teaching. So anyway, I would like to be able to share some information regarding Heart Zones. Um, it's a system that allows you to not only motivate your students, but it's, it's really rewarding as a teacher to be able to use assessments and give feedback in ways that I've never been able to do in physical education in the past. And, and I'm really excited to share that with you. It's a system that can use a lot of different devices. Uh, we use the Blink Watch by Skosh. We use a Garmin Foot Pod, and uh, there are other vehicles you could use or, or types of technology as well. But um, I'm here presenting, and I was planning to do it with a colleague, um, Mike Mustar. Mike had some situations that made him unavailable to, to do this with us, and and unfortunately he can't. I know he really wishes he could be here and, and certainly I do as well, but uh, I'll try to share some things that Mike does in our elementaries as well with everybody um, as we progress through this, this presentation. Bear with me, I've never done a, a virtual uh, presentation before and, and I'm hoping that I can get through this well and that it's, it's a rewarding experience for everyone out there and, and myself as well. And I also want to thank the PE Summit um, team, uh, Pedagogy, 
uh, for the opportunity to be a part of this. This is really a unique opportunity, uh, the PE Summit 3.0. And um, I look forward to not only sharing, but being able to gather a lot of information and new ideas myself over the next 24 hours. Um, I'm going to move into a screen share here and show you some presentation slides and some websites as well. So one moment and we'll, we will be doing that as well. Okay, here we are. I'm Daryl Salmi. As I said, um, some of my contact information is here, as well as Mike Mustar, who is an elementary teacher. We both teach in Stillwater, Minnesota. The Smart PE, as I kind of alluded to, alluded to in uh, my introduction, uh, the new Smart PE teacher includes the use of technology to enhance the learning experiences of students, choosing to use tools that promote activity and an increase of moderate to vigorous physical activity, MVPA, allow for meaningful and measurable assessment and offer the teacher the opportunity to personal, uh, personalize learning for students. And that's a big one. Um, we all want to be able to meet our students where they're at and to provide opportunities that of course are going to stretch them and um, make them healthier, make them more intelligent or physically literate. And, and that's the goal of all physical education teachers. We wanna help our students to be better learners. And to do that, it's the whole mind and body concept. Um, our transition to smart PE, taking the guessing out of assessing. In the top left-hand corner, you can see some students in our fitness center. Um, they're riding ellipticals. You can see the Heart Zones big board up there. And they're all in a, in a workout here, and they're all in yellow, orange, and red zones, which is moderate to vigorous, okay? Um, zones blue is low. Um, green is light to moderate. Yellow is moderate, orange is moderate to vigorous, and red is vigorous. Um, we use iPads in physical education now. You can see that I have my teacher's iPad here. I don't happen to have the big board up at the moment, but I can still see everything that's going on with my students so that I can offer support and encouragement and motivation and things of those natures. Bottom left-hand corner, virtual spinning class. Um, this year, I'm happy to say we're going to have a split screen projector. So now I'll have the big board up with the virtual spinning class. And the Heart Zones system really lends itself to so many different applications, as you'll learn as we go through this, that it's incredibly exciting as a physical educator to to know that there's really great opportunities in the horizon uh, many of which I've already um, been able to be a part of and many of which uh, I don't even know are coming my way yet so it's it's kind of cool it's like it's like Christmas every year um, we see a lot of different equipment opportunities for um, learning how to be active in safe manners, lifetime activities. Um, we have an impossible to possible challenge where you can see the boys running outside. And of course, I use a daily fit log to help our students learn how to manage their um, health and their activities, to set goals regarding activities and health, and of course, to track that. And that's a free online app that I, I like to include because I use a lot of the Heart Zones stuff, and the students will use that feedback to then go out to the day fit log and, of course, track some of their progress. The Game Changer. The Game Changer, changer is truly Heart Zones system. Uh, it, it comprises of the big board, the blink watch made by Skosh, uh, the bridge, heart zones, zoning, and of course the iPad, which gives the teacher a mobile opportunity to track our students. Um, all of these things are invaluable. Uh, they're easy to use. They're accurate. Um, everyone in our school district has access to all of these items. We're very fortunate. Um, and we learn so much from each other as teachers and from our students as we go through it. And that's part of the really neat thing is 
now it's something I'm doing with my students. They don't feel like it's something I'm doing to them. And I'm, and I'm talking about assessment and teaching and learning. A lot of times I feel like our students think that it, that the learning part is something that we're doing to them and I gotcha and you got to do this. And, and really, you know what, it's great to have this shift in thought process and, and the way we see things and that learning really needs to be something we do together. And with this type of system, that's exactly what's happening. Um, my students are comfortable. They're getting feedback from the system. And I'm giving them feedback, but it's not just about what I think they're doing or what I think they should do. They're getting that feedback from the system. And now the relationships for myself and my students are even better as we grow together and learn together. Getting started. Um, it's really a simple system to use. Um, th these are two screenshots that I've taken from uh, my Heart Zones application on the iPad. Um, I simply just choose an instructor here. We have two instructors in this one. Myself, for example, if I choose that, whoops, I actually tried to choose it there. Um, moving to the right, this is the next screen that shows up. I have all my classes, I have a group of girls hockey players, and I was fortunate enough to work with some colleagues of mine in Stillwater and present to our school board who were extremely excited and very interested to learn more about the Heart Zones opportunities. So um, really need an opportunity that way to share it at that level to help people to understand how we're getting our learners ready to learn. A uh, little brain science there and, and there's so much more to it beyond the science of health and being healthy and brain science and learning readiness. It's, it's also a physical education piece where you need to ask yourself, why should I do this? In terms of as a physical education teacher, we find ourselves under attack quite often, whether it's in budgetary meetings, whether it's in how much is enough and how much maybe isn't enough. Um, are we a prep period or are we a meaningful part of the learning day? Um, there are all kinds of things going on. And so I guess the real question is, why wouldn't I do something like this that really demonstrates to people what we are doing for our kids. It, it's just a win-win situation. So anyway, I choose a class here. Um, moving to the next screen, I just wanted to see, once I get into the class mode, I can see all the students' name by list. Very easy to take um, attendance that way. If a student were for some reason to forget their, their number of their uh, wearable, their Blink watch, um, it's right here for them. I can share that very easily. Um, kind of a paperless uh, FIAD, if you will, which, which I really appreciate. There's nothing worse than trying to sort through papers, keep them straight, and all these things. So anyway, the next screen. I wanted to demonstrate that within my period, I can choose to use heart rate monitors, the Blink, and the foot pod, the Garmin foot pods that we use, or I could choose to use just foot pods. I can also use to use only heart rate monitors. Uh, there are a lot of different things I can do. And that again is speaking to the product that we've been able to, to use. It lends itself to many opportunities. So I choose one of those. Um, I can take and choose a method for zones, whether it's gonna be a reading of threshold training, zoning, or max. As you can see here, I'm going with zoning. Once I'm in here, I select a sensor set. We have two sets of watches, sensors, okay? Sensor set A, my colleague is using. I use B, so I just make sure I click that. Um, and really, once I do that, it's, it's always there until I change it. It's not something I need to do each and every time, but I need to remember to do that once I get started or if I change sensor sets for some reason. Locations to the right, we have a large gym, a weight room, a uh, small gym and a fitness center. So I can choose any one of those old locations that I'm in and, and I will start recording data from the bridge into the heart zone system on my iPad. 
and that's of course the the data it's reading is from the the um, blink um, wearable the heart rate watt monitor or sensor zoning methods and appearance I went through this a little bit uh, we chose zoning um, I'm going to go with threshold one at 130 and threshold two at 160 and 130 160 are beats per minute uh, the watch is come preset at that it's a, a safe level to be at this is a sliding chart here within the iPad that I can increase for individual students personalizing the learning or as a class um, there are things I can do with the big board in terms of the uh, the tiles I can have it gradient as it gradually goes from a moderate level of yellow into a moderate to vigorous level of orange or perhaps I just want to go solid and as soon as it is fully into orange it changes to orange um, Dropbox I haven't gotten into that yet but there's some things here that are important in terms of the Dropbox is enabled and that's important because the data that comes from the system will also go onto your computer really through Dropbox and that way I can access all the reports in there as well through the CSV files which m look much like uh, Excel spreadsheet if you will and I can see that now it's reading through the iPad and um, everything will get sent right to my computer from the iPad as soon as I stop the session it'll load right into my computer it's not something I need to hook up to or anything like that it's, it's virtual it's coming from the wasp from from the iPad to the wasp into the computer uh, loading into my Dropbox file and the Dropbox files are free Heart Zones. Uh, I just want to share some more pictures of it in action in my school. I can in the top left hand corner, you can see some students that are playing Foursquare. And a neat little story with the Foursquare piece is uh, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to a lot of great aerobic activity the way I see it in recess and in other places but in here it was a rain day choice day really and we have what I call a smart hearts goal a daily smart hearts goal smart PE smart heart goal for each of our zone levels in the big board you can see the big board in the middle picture here again I want to remind you that the blue is level one or the really low level I'm sitting around giving a webinar or, or, par or participating in a conversation or maybe I'm just casually walking once I get into the green my heart rate starting to elevate I'm warming up a little bit maybe uh, the early stages of a dynamic warm-up and and I'm into green for every minute I'm in the green zone I'm gonna get two points for every minute that I'm in the moderate or yellow level, I'm going to get three points. Once I get into the orange level, I'll get four points for every minute. And once I get into the high intensity red, I will get five points per minute. The neat thing about that is within these tiles on the big board, on the bottom left hand side, you can't see it clearly now, I'll show you in some other pictures. Um, but there's points that are accumulating and for example if I want a moderate level I know that's three points per minute in the yellow zone then what I might do over a 30 minute session that I might record um, is say okay you we want to get a moderate to vigorous level of intensity workout MVPA we want to hit that and really reap the rewards of getting in that zone and holding it for a while. So over 30 minutes, I should earn at least 90 points on the big board. So I'll be able to track my heart rate. I'll look at the color of the tiles and I'll have my numbers accumulating. So I know exactly where I'm at in terms of achieving my daily goal. This is a separator. I haven't seen this and been able to use it in any other fashion and the kids truly 
want to reach those goals and oftentimes are trying to set them higher and higher. They're raising the bar on their own. It's not me telling them, go further, go further, but that's exactly what they're doing. And there's also a safety part to this. Um, as I speak to those kids that really want to raise the bar, um, we, also, we also have kids that need to understand what it feels like to be at a high level. And you know what? A lot of times we do, and sometimes we don't. Um, I'm going to share you with you a story of a student of mine that um, definitely knew what it feel like to be in a high-intensity level and unfortunately got there way too fast all the time. This is a student that really, really, truly enjoyed PE. Anytime I saw him, he talking about, okay, I have PE tomorrow. I'm ready to go. I can't wait. This is fun. Um, he'd get to class. He'd be excited. He'd be ready. We'd get going. And, and as soon as they come into class, we're moving. Whether it's some sort of ASAP activity, it could be a simple walk and talk as everyone gets prepared to go into um some sort of sort of game or activity and into a dynamic warm-up for example um we would do our walk and talk we'd get into a dynamic warm-up and towards the end of the dynamic warm-up as we're getting ready to get into a more vigorous episode um he basically was done he he, he would stop moving or he'd be moving very slowly and it always kind of baffled me. I wanted to know, you know, what is the deal here? He seems to really enjoy uh, the idea of Fiat, but he's, I, I don't know, I just can't get him to the point to show that enjoyment while he's here. Well, the problem was this. Once I got him into a heart rate monitor, I learned that he didn't, um, he didn't have to work very hard, so to speak. He had to work hard just to move, I should say. Um, he, he couldn't move um, and continue to keep his heart rate at a comfortable level, so therefore he'd have to slow down and or stop. So the safest thing for me to be doing is not get alongside him and encourage him to go or let him know that, hey, together we'll do it. Um, really, it was a matter of learning how to work through that safely. In other words, slowing down and coming to a situation where his heart rate is at a level that's appropriate and safe. Um, you also have students that always want to go too hard, and it's not safe. They don't know how to pace themselves. They don't know how to understand how to warm up for an activity, a vigorous episode, and this is yet another tool that we can see all the time. And that's the beauty of the Blink watch as well. I'm going to kind of go back here a little bit um, and show you the watch because it blinks on the front. I'm sorry, the back side there is showing with the three sensors. On the front where the S is, just above that, there's going to be a blue, purple, or red blink. And that's going to allow the kids to know which zone they're in as well throughout their activity time. So whether it's on the big board or just blinking on their arm, the kids always know where they're at. Um, this is a screenshot of some things my colleague Mike Mustar does in the elementary school. Uh, they use the foot pods. You can see them in a plastic little carrier. Carrier. He has the big board that looks very much like the big board we use in the secondary with the heart rate monitors as it's pretty much the same except for it's counting steps and translating that into the MV, MVPA. It tallies points. You can see the points in here a little more clearly. Their smart hearts goals might be something like ours in the secondary, but it's being measured through foot pods. So the students in Stillwater, we're really learning about what moderate to vigorous physical activity feels like using um, foot pods, foot counters, step counters, and also heart rate monitors. And you can compare and contrast. And, and within our society these days, those, those are the things that are being used. You know, whether it's a pedometer or a heart rate monitor or a combination thereof, those are what people are using right now to measure activity and to help 
record tracking or track their activities. Reports and data, allowing teachers to do several things. It allows me to adjust my instruction to the needs of my kids, whether it's an individual, a little bit of the story I shared with you, or maybe it's for a class. But I can certainly adjust and personalize the learning experience for myself and my students, more importantly. It's a huge motivator for, story, for students. I know that the students in the elementaries, right through the secondaries, um, really appreciate that opportunity to know exactly where they're at, to have a daily goal beyond the excitement of playing a game or learning something new. They also have that fitness goal that's going to help them in terms of getting their brains ready to learn, in terms of getting them in a place that they're comfortable for learning. And of course, there are reports. There are reports that you will find right with it, right on the iPad within the Heart Zone system, or you can go out to your computer on the Dropbox, and I'll show you coming up here shortly the difference between the reports. Formative assessment. This is just an example of one formative. There are so many different ways to to assess students in a formative manner. This would be perhaps during a cool down at the end of a period, uh, you might work with a friend or a group and talk with them about what, what, what activity was the most difficult for you in terms of being strenuous? Which one was, was the most intense for you? How did you feel? Did you notice the zone you were in, the color, for example? Were you in an orange or maybe it was a red for you? Which activity was the most strenuous for you. Could you hold that zone? Why could you hold the zone? Maybe you couldn't hold the zone for very long. Maybe discuss that. Or of course you could go with some of the questions I have on the screen now. Very very simple and basic questions if you will. But there are a variety of ways you can use this information. And again on a daily fit log that's another area that my students will use this information. Here's a summative example. Um, this report was summative in nature, and their goal was to maintain 25 minutes of MVPA. And to know that, here is the student, the period. The workout day was on the 29th. We started at 2.15, uh, two duration of 28 minutes and 7 seconds. Average heart rate, 153. Peak heart rate, 201 minimum. Points, this is our daily goal right here, 106, okay? Our goal was not to get 106, but 25. Again, I said that yellow zone is worth three points per minute. Three times 25 is 75. So for example, if they earned 75 points or more, they got all their points for that summative assessment. And this holds a lot more weight in our district. Summative assessments are worth 80% of the overall grade. And you might have six to eight summative assessments in a semester. And combined, that's, that's your 80%. So these are important. And we build up to that with these types of assessments in formative fashion prior to. With this, this is the exact report that gets emailed home at the end of the recording session. So the end of the class, I'll hit stop on my device, the, the iPad, and it will send a report home or ask me, would you like to generate reports? Of course, I click yes. Would I like to generate emails? And I also click yes, because during the setup portion of this uh, Heart Zone system, you can add emails for students and parents, or both, and I, we send them to students. We all, all of our students have school Gmail accounts. So I just send it home to them. So the, they have these. They will take this report, use the information on it, go out to the daily fit log, and record or track their progress because they have goals and things there. And I'll show you that as we get a little further into this. Um, Hopefully, I'm not going too fast um, as, I, as I go through this presentation. Um, as a pre-recorded presentation, I'm hoping that uh, the pacing is appropriate. Of course, I'll be available for questions later, and I look forward to meeting a lot of you.
Moving forward, this is the report, the CSV file that you'll find in your Dropbox. Each instructor will have uh, their, their classes in a Dropbox, which I go onto my computer. I took a screenshot of this. You can see the date, time, teacher, period seven, date two, participant name. I took that out intentionally here. Uh, calories, if you wanted to do some activities with that. Heart zone points, again, you get points for each level you're in, for each minute you're in each level. And here the goal was to get 85. So everyone that got 85 or more earned all of their daily points that day. Okay, you can see the amount of time in each zone. Zone one through four or five. A threshold one and two. I want to bring that up because I had mentioned earlier that the watches come from the factory at 130 to 160. 130 being threshold one and 160 being threshold two. And that I could adjust that on the iPad, the heart zones application. And I did on this. It's later in the year. So I moved it up for their first threshold to be at 141 and the second at 176. To be very honest with you, I in probably meant to be 140 and 175. And as I slid it, I made a mistake. Um, average heart rate, you can see here, peak heart rate for each student. Uh, again, the goal was 85. They all did a wonderful job. Most students were right there. Uh, and, and now again, this takes the guessing out of assessing. It's an opportunity to give the meaningful and reliable feedback to students that they can use to set goals, to plan for further activity inside and outside of school, and to live healthy and productive lives. Uh, why should we use Heart Zones with PE programs? Well, there are a lot of reasons here, five that I, I think of, to ensure that my students meet the recommended amount of 150 or 225 minutes of MPE or MVPA per week. And that's from the CDC. It's also to help prepare the brain for learning. You can see I have a little picture to the right. Um, many have seen that, but it is a powerful slide to me and to many others in that you cannot understate the importance of physical activity, especially at the moderate to various level or more. And sometimes kids might not realize they're not getting to where they need to be. They need to get to that moderate to vigorous level of intensity to truly re, uh, reap those rewards of really engaging the brain or getting the brain ready to learn. And of course, the other health aspects that are so helpful from being active consistently or regularly, I should say, uh, at a moderate to vigorous level of intensity. Using the heart zones, my students and myself, I know that they're getting there and they know that they're definitely going to reap the rewards of, of being physically active, of becoming more physically literate. And it's, it's just an awesome tool. I also use it enhanced learning and assessment. I've gone through some of the assessments with you. Uh, the enhanced learning is, is kids understanding where they're at. What does this feel like? What does it look like? And the big board pro presents those opportunities along with the Heart Zone Smart Heart daily goals. Uh, personalized learning and you know what just for the heart of it uh, health heart is one of the big things in our society as well and has been for a while and I'd be remiss not to mention that as well okay heart zones uh, QR codes are used to help promote activity. Uh, I just gave a couple of that I, I had on my computer here. We use a lot of them. I have them in our fitness center. I have them in our gym. Students can use them before school, after school, and of course during class. I'll let kids do maybe a circuit. They'll choose a circuit of their liking. Together they'll get an iPad. They'll go through each of these, these links and they'll see a brief little demonstration of the activity. And there's some directions. There's a variety of ways that kids come up with changing this. We'll talk about that. 
Um, I share other ways they could potentially complete the circuit. Um, but it really allows them to, to drive the learning a little bit again. And uh, it lends itself again to, I find them comparing the different circuits to what's going on the, on the big board of, uh, through the heart zone system. They'll get a system, they'll reflect on, or they'll get a, a circuit, they'll use the QR codes to reflect on, or to get the workout, and then they'll reflect on the different circuits from day to day to see how one went versus another, and what are their goals, and is this type of circuit going to help you meet your goal, or are there some things you could do to change the circuit, for example. So this is really just a starting point. It's technology-based that will also enhance the learning in it, and it really joins in well with what we're trying to do with the uh, heart rate technology with heart, heart zones. Uh, the Daily Fit Log, I've spoken to this a little bit as well. Um, this is a free uh, online, internet-based um, application. It's a student-driven program. Students enter their fitness data. Students enter and track SMART goals. Data follows students from each grade and different buildings. And it's free. Okay, so again, there's so many good things here. It's student-driven. It's student-managed. I facilitate it. Students carry their scores with them from year to year, building the building, and that's huge. I know that many of us, maybe all of us, have been in situations that students will complete fitness tests of one type or another, and there are a variety, a lot of different tests, for example, that are built into the system so you can track and record. But the, we used to write down these scores, and then it just kind of, went away the students really didn't do anything with the scores or maybe you talked about them a little bit after we took the test or before the test but we really didn't do anything with scores and at least I know I did but now I'm at a point where between the use of different technologies the art zones the QR codes and of course a lot of other things that we're doing in physical education now I can use the daily fit log to record these. The kids need to learn how to manage their health and they need to learn how to manage their physical activity levels. How often, how long, the whole fit pr principle, frequency, intensity, time, and type. This is the perfect tool. Classes are developed, they're put into the daily fit log, very simple process. If I have time at the end, I'll likely try to get into that with you. But for us, they go in and they log their activity. They can they can set goals and uh, for the daily fit log as well. Uh, once they make a plan, they can go back out there and yes, I did this, or they can go out there a la, a la carte and and choose activities that they've done, and whether it's a light, moderate, or vigorous level of intensity. How many minutes? Some notes. How did you feel? How did it go? Where were you? Uh, a lot of things like that. And this is exactly where where we're at in society as well. I mean, there are a lot of different opportunities for adult learners and adults in general to track activity, to challenge each other, to be a part of a community. And, and that's what we're setting up in Stillwater. We're setting our kids up to go out into society and, and be healthy and to be physically literate and able to participate in a variety of activities and to use the tools at their disposal to, to help them to maintain that level of fitness. Okay, student uh, setup screen and home screen. I just made a PDF with my um, building tech coordinator, Matt Howe. Um, he, he helped uh, just help me set this up, get the arrows and things like that. It's not a difficult thing since we've done this. We've done this a few years ago. I, I realized that's, this is something I want to be able to do. So we use pages. I drop it in there, the picture, the and uh, now I can write on the on PDF and, and give very simple opportunities to set up classes. I will make this presentation available to everybody, uh, and you'll be able to see this on YouTube later. So 
if you're trying to get this information down, uh, you you can get it later. And also, I know that on the daily fit log, the the directions and the support are are awesome. Uh, so it'll be easy for you to use this if you choose to do that. But you can see you have different tabs. I have a my profile assessment guide, classes, fitness testing, class reporting, and bulletin board. So I'm I'm in as an instructor right now. I'm going to set up my classes down below. You can say I have some set up already by period and day. And now once I get that set up, the kids are basically going to log in. They'll set up a change of password. I always use their student ID, so they always know what it is. And so do I. I can find it rather than something unique that they make up. I use a student ID. So anyway, their profile, this is kind of like their home page when they get in there. Uh, this is just a name I made up for this. Um, you can, oops, sorry, everybody. Um, you can see the dates. I click on a day. I make an entry, and I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, I move on with my day, I move on with my activity, it's tracked, it's it's ready to go. And again, everything I track, whether it's fitness scores, I can click on a fitness testing tab, enter a score, I can enter my fitness plans, I can look at an overview of activities, which ones, what percent of my activity time was spent in cardiovascular endurance type activities, what percent were in muscular strength building activities. So it lays it out very nice. The reporting system works incredibly well. Um, I have some more things I'll share in the daily fit log. I'm going to go through a couple other slides here first before I start going into other screen sharing opportunities in, in case I have, <laughs> honestly, any technical difficulties as this is my first time again, as I had mentioned earlier, any kind of um, webinar or web-based um, conferencing. So moving on, uh, some books that I, I have enjoyed reading. Uh, that I have learned a lot from. Many of you have likely heard of these and some more. And if you know more, put them out there. The more we can learn, the more we understand as physical educators, the better we're going to be for our students and, of course, for ourselves. Um, some of these I share with parents on back to school nights. Uh, I have the heart zone system rolling in my classroom, my health room. The big board is rolling uh, in the background, and parents are always like, hey, what is that? And it gives me a great opportunity to share with them firsthand what's going on in physical education. And of course, we get that tied into some of the brain research and things like that. And, and of course, we know about the body part, the, the cardiovascular endurance, the, the heart health, the diabetes epidemic, the, a lot of different things that we have going on um, that are related to just leading a sedentary life. Well, here are some books. Sparkling Life is a website um, that you can go to as well. And that has just a real lot of information that's very helpful. Brain Rules, great read. Um, enjoyed that. That's, a, that's got a lot of support in it in terms of videos and different things like that. 12 Rules of the Brain. And I might say here, physical activity is rule number one. Physical activity and academic performance, fitness-based PE, um, smart PE with enhanced technology and opportunities. In other words, fitness along with enhanced technology opportunities, and it's based on science, the heart zone system. Vigorous activity has a strong correlation with brain and health. Improves learning, sharpens focus, helps with emotional and social health. Rule number one of brain rules is exercise boosts brain power. Uh, Dr. Rady, that wrote the book Spark, says it's like miracle grow for the brain. Thank you for being active. I hope that you've gotten a lot out of this presentation. Um, I look forward to learning from others as well as we progress through this. And 
uh, I look forward to sharing more as well. I, I said that I'd try to get some other screens here, and I'm going to do that before I close. And the first one is the heart zones. And that is kind of give you a picture of the big board here. And here's the big board right here. So you can see the tiles, uh, the big board, the names, the information on that as well. And those are important pieces of information because the students can use them in a variety of ways. You can set up a lot of lessons based on what's going on with the big board, whether it's in the bottom left, which zone you're in, it tracks what zone you're in so you can see by color and bar graph at the bottom. And then of course your current heart rate. You can set it up so that on the big board, on the when you project it, the name isn't there, but just a number. So a student number is there. Teachers will see names on the iPad but uh, not otherwise. And there we go. I, I hope the screen sharing is working well. Um, I'm going to go to another area now. Um, I want to share with you some things with the daily fit log as well. I'm going to go to my login. I think I have it there now. Yes, I do. And what I want to do with this is to just show you what it looks like. You, you can go here and you can set up your own account for free and, and get yourself logged in. And uh, I think you'll find that you'll really enjoy this opportunity. Um, all these are going to in enhance the student learning and provide you with many opportunities to stretch your students and, and to learn together as we go through this. I'll try to log in here and show you some of this. Okay, I'm now logged in. You can see on some of my other events here uh, what I have going, uh, I should say prior dates, cardio, played football, moderate, 45 minutes. Um, steps, daily steps, I hear. I, I took 6,000 at a moderate level. I took 1,200 there. Um, cardio, water sports, moderate, flexibility. I did yoga, multiple poses, did it at a light level. Today, Thursday, Thursday's a rain day. So I'm just going to choose log your activity. I go on here and I go for, well, it's been raining a lot. I went out on elliptical. Where is elliptical here? Um, right there. I rode that at a moderate level for one hour. I felt great. Log it. It's as simple as that for our students. They go out there, they see it, they've got it. I can click on the same day plan for a new activity. I'm on exercise. I'm going to do a cardio workout again. We go to moderate. I'm going to go for, let's say, 45 minutes. And how many times do you plan on doing this activity? So just for one day, or maybe it's more than one. And I'm going to do it uh, which days of the week will I do this activity? Uh, select all, or actually, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to do it. Friday. I'm going to do it again on Monday. How many weeks will you repeat this? I'm going to go for four weeks. And the start day is on the 6th. Plan it. And it's on my calendar. Everything in that's highlighted in the gray or black here is my plan. Once I go out there and do it, I can go out and add an activity, delete the activity, delete, stop doing this. But when I go out there here, I can now log my activity and it shows that I've completed it. Other things I can do, I can set a goal. Uh, today's the sixth type of goal, increase activity time, increase steps, increase fitness, improve data. I'm going to go with activity time and again I'm going to record this using the Heart Zones application or system on my heart rate monitor and the student will get that report and they'll go home and look at it and use that to uh, help them with their goals, fitness category, cardiovascular endurance. Um, 
It's time to set your goal. Your current average is six minutes per day. This calculated using your logging of activity in the last 30 days. I just set this up, you know, for I think I have four days marked. So um, the students is going to look a little different in terms of time there. How many minutes would you like uh, to average per day? Well, okay, I'm going to go with one hour per day, 60 minutes a day. CDD, CDC recommends it. Which date would you like to accomplish this goal by? Well, I'm going to go with, let's go to September 1st, set goal. And now you can see on my calendar that I have some set goals as well. That's the green dot. This heart is fitness information. The date, heart rate, I didn't put that in yet. Uh, five, nine and a half, 180, 26 point. Two. So there are a lot of things you can be doing with, with this application as well um, as with our Heart Zones application. Back to screen sharing. Sorry. I'm back. Hello, everybody. Uh, again, I just want to wrap up and thanking everybody for taking the time to be a part of the Physical Education Summit 3.0 and thanking for our great physical education leaders, uh, the, the Phys Edagogy team and uh, Phys Ed Summit 3.0 group and everybody else that's presenting and everybody that's taking the time to take part in this online opportunity. Um, it's been an incredible experience for me to, to be a part of this, and I look forward to being able to communicate with others, to learn from you, and hopefully be able to pass that on to my students as well. Have a wonderful day, and I thank you greatly.